Singing out God's praises but Every now and then It can get a little complicated So I remember when I was in that old church basement Singing hallelujah So long ye When I think of the goodness And your love for me This is the joy of my salvation It's coming just an old hallelujah with a new melody, and I'm singing. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus, Jesus, precious Lord, 
None on the earth has been above Jesus, Jesus, precious Lord, none on the earth or heavens above that I have found beautiful. You are my treasure, my great reward. Jesus, Jesus, my precious None on the earth, Lord, heavens above, now that I have found more beautiful. You are my treasure, my, my great reward. And I just want to move your heart. It's all I want to do. I just want to stand in awe. Love on you, no matter how much it costs. I freely give it all to you, it all to you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, my offering, all my ambitions, my hopes, my dreams. Oh
song I sing gives everybody. Just tell me what moves you. Just tell me what moves you. Is it a fragrance?
Jesus have their Bibles. I remember in 87, I started working with Smith Gray. They sent me to Fort Benning, and I remember a brick mason that walked with the Lord. He made an impact on me. It was seven years after that day before I got saved. But I remember that guy in construction walking with the Lord. I would have given anything to have this when I was a baby in Christ be able to come on the job before work and worship, be taught, pray with men. I had nobody. I had men that said, George, you'll be back. I've been back in 29 and a half years. So, uh, so this, this is an honor and a blessing. And uh, I, I don't say it enough. I've been here since September of 2021. Uh, and I thank Chris for that. He didn't know me. He seen me on Facebook a few times and he reached out. And uh, I remember him. And he reached out and invited me here to teach. And I didn't know what to expect. And it's grown. A lot of different men have come in and out uh, since I've been here. And, and I get it. It's, it's for some of y'all, it's a requirement to be here. But one day you'll realize the importance of it. And you'll think back of how much this made an impact in your walk and in your life. <clears throat> and you'll thank God for it. And, you know, it's, it's look, I told y'all, many times I come in here and men will be sitting in the back with their eyes closed. And I'm okay with that. Your spirit man is getting it. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can go in any church at any given Sunday morning and see people in the back with their eyes closed. So... Uh, but, it, you know, <clears throat> you, you, you reflect on where God took you from and where you're at now, and you, and you think, my God, how did I make it through that? Because I had nobody. I had my Bible. I didn't hang out with anybody at break times or lunchtime because there was nobody that wanted to talk <coughs> about Jesus. They wanted to talk about the night before at the new bar or the you know, going back to the new bar that same night because that was my life before I got saved. I was an alcoholic 10 years and Jesus set me free. So, uh, but I, I want to talk to you this morning about how to minister healing. I know there's some outreaches coming up and look, I know there's, there's God's going to use you where you're at. All right? So, I want to encourage you. I want to give you some information. I want to teach you a little bit. I want to give you some scriptures to encourage you so that you'll have something to stand on when you go out into the streets to minister to people. Because a lot of times, in myself, you know, when I was young in the Lord, I thought I had to know everything before I stepped out 
and started telling people. Now, <clears throat> I say that I was three months old in the Lord when the Lord pressed upon me to go out into the streets and witness. I went out with a testimony. That's what I had. And as I've grown over the years, I can go out with more than a testimony. And I've learned to shorten my testimony to 30 seconds to a minute because nobody wants to hear a sermon on the streets. Right? Most people are waiting to see you demonstrate the kingdom. A lot of people turn away from Christianity because they have a wrong idea about Christianity. They have the religious view of Christianity. They have what the church has taught about Christianity, uh, the traditions of men. They don't have a real view of Jesus. A real view of Jesus is love, right? It's a demonstration of the kingdom. It's a demonstration. Paul said, I didn't come to you with the excellency of speech. I came to you in demonstration of the spirit and of power. The whole world's groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The whole world's groaning. People are groaning, waiting on you to manifest the Son of God. And how do you do that? You go out wherever you go. It, it don't have to be a special occasion <laughs> set up for you to go out. As you go, preach, demonstrate. Share. Now, when you're out and you're, look, the more you lean into this of wanting to minister to people, your eyes will be open to see people that you didn't see before. They've always been out there. If you, if you get your mind set on, I want to go heal the sick, you'll start seeing sick people, crippled people, people in wheelchairs, crutches, canes that you didn't see before. They've always been out there, but your eyes weren't open to really see them. But the more you lean into to wanting to go minister healing and deliverance, you'll start to see people that need this. And when you go, the first thing you want to do is determine the problem. If you don't see a physical sign, just ask. Ask people. Is there anything going on in your body that you need prayer for? Is there anything going on in your mind that you need prayer for? Ask people. You'd be surprised how many people are waiting on somebody to demonstrate Jesus. Somebody that will listen. Somebody that cares enough to ask them, is there anything you need prayer for? Now, you might get rejected, but... That's okay. Go on to the next person. Look, even if you don't see, even, even if you see a physical sign, you can still ask. Don't let their answer be so long that you step out of faith. Because at the same time people are waiting on you to listen, people like to unload everything on a person that will listen. Is that right? You ask them, well, what's going on with your leg? 30 minutes later, you'd have found out about all their health problems, about all their family problems, and now you've done moved out of faith into, well, I don't know what God's going to do for you. You know, you done moved on to their side. So, like, you're in bad shape. I just really don't know how God's going to help you. Uh, and, and it happens. It, it happens because the enemy wants to distract. And if, if he can get you caught up, you, you're in faith, you walk up to a person, you're ready to lay hands on him, you're ready to deliver him, you're ready to set him free. Now they start talking about all their problems and it distracts you, right? Y'all been there? <coughs> Listen to them and then take care of the problem. Get a name. Whatever sickness, whatever disease, uh, whatever mental problem, whatever's going on with them, get a name. And uh, let me ask you this question. Is there a name that scares you? Cancer scares a lot of people. Just hearing the name cancer scares a lot of people. Is that right? 
you, you, I mean, family members, you know, they get diagnosed with cancer and fear sets in, right? Or any other disease or sickness, fear will set in. Well, I put this scripture in here to give you encouragement that there's a name above all other names. Philippians 2, 9 and 10 says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Why is this important to know? Because when you're standing before the enemy, you need to know who the victor is. You need to know who has already won the battle. We win. We are not a defeated foe. The enemy is a defeated foe. Jesus already whooped them. We're just reinforcing what Jesus has already done. Sickness, disease, these things are the enemy. So get a name. Or symptoms. I thought about symptoms. Symptoms are facts. It may be a fact that you got something going on in your body. It may be a fact that you're in a wheelchair. It may be a fact that you're on crutches, but it's not the truth. The more you stand on the truth, the facts will change. Truth is, 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. Truth is, and I didn't put this on your paper, Truth is, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's truth. Why do you need to know this? Again, when you stand before the enemy, you need to know that we win, that we're winners. Jesus has already defeated the enemy. How do you do it? If he's already done it, how do you stand and win with the word? It is your weapon of warfare. The word is the sword of the spirit. It's your weapon. It's the only weapon listed in Ephesians 6. When you go through the armor of God, the word is your weapon. That's how you stand and defeat who Jesus has already defeated. Now, next step, find out what the people cannot do. Again, just simply ask, can you lift your arm over your head? Can you bend your knees? Can you bend over and touch your toes? Can you breathe deeply? Can you twist your head back and forth? These are just examples. Is there something that you cannot do? <clears throat> I've, I've, had, I've prayed with people that couldn't get their arm no higher than this. And after laying hands on them and commanding it to be healed, they were able to lift their arm all the way. I prayed with a lady at Jack's one day. She had knee problems. Uh, she had a brace on. And I, I spoke over her knee. The next thing I know, she's bending her leg and she's hollering to her friend across the restaurant. Look what God did. Ask, ask people, is there something you can't do? And then hit it with a command and have them do what they couldn't do before. Does this make sense? Is this, is this good? Does this make sense? Is this simple? It, it's... it's when you know what the word says, you can walk in the boldness of that. And you don't have to be intimidated or walk in fear. Now, if there's no name, if they don't have an idea of what the disease is, the sickness or the pain or whatever it is, just use a general term like sickness or infirmity or devil. Sickness, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Body be healed. Devil loose. Use general terms. It, it Look, 
to be honest with you, if you go to Mark 16, it says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You don't even have to say anything. Amen. Just lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So, attack. Cast out, evict the spirit of infirmity. <laughs> this is a word of command. We do not beg God. We do not talk to God about the problem. We talk to the problem about God. This, this is where we... Look, I'm guilty as everybody else. When you learn the right way to do things, you see more results. Now, I'm not saying if you pray for somebody, God, will you heal them right now that God's not going to heal them. But I do know that if you go up and lay hands and command sickness to go, it has to go. You walk in that authority that Jesus had. He gave you that authority. He gave you dominion to walk like him, to speak like him, to command like him. And that's what we should walk in. He said in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Keep in mind, this is war. We're in a war. It's warfare. There's a, there's a great book I highly recommend. Uh, of course, it's about that thick by Gregory Boyd, I think it is. It's called God of War. You know that book? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a hard read. The print small. And, uh, but it's, it's about that thick. But but he, he really breaks it down. And, and if I'm being honest with you, the book's that thick. I'm about this far in. Uh, but he really breaks down the, the enemy that we face. And he, he breaks down uh, the, the idea of there's no mercy with the enemy. He don't care who you are, what color you are, how old you are, what class of person you are. He don't care. He don't care if you're an infant or if you're an old person. Anywhere in between. <laughs> this is war. Sickness and disease, these things are tactics of the enemy take out God's people. We're at war. We need to have that mindset that we're at war. There is an enemy. Like I said, Jesus has already defeated him. And if we understand that, there's not an enemy that can stand before us that can't be taken down. Now, if there's more... Then two problems with a person. Facts will change when you speak truth. It don't matter what's going on with a person. It don't matter how many problems they got in their body. You speak to the body. You speak to the enemy in the body. You speak to the sickness. You speak to the disease. Whatever it is, it don't matter. You have the authority. When you speak the name of Jesus, they all have to bow to his name. Attack. Cast out, evict the spirit of infirmity. Luke 10, 19. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is why you can lay hands on a leper and not have to worry about the leprosy getting on you. Because nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is why you can walk into a hospital room with a very contagious person and not worry about what they have and set them free from whatever it is 
because nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, I'm not telling anybody to walk into a room with a contagious person. All right? But I'm telling you, you can. I'm telling you, you can embrace the lepers like Jesus did and not worry about anything hurting you because the Bible says nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's, it's you know, when I was young in the Lord, and I used to listen to the old timers talk about casting out devils, and they'd have the people grab their Bible, you know, hold your Bible over yourself because that devil may jump on you. And do you know if you're full of the Holy Ghost and you're walking in the power and authority of Jesus, the devil's not going to jump on you. The devil don't want anything to do with you if you know that you can cast him out. Y'all ever heard that? Old people, get your Bible, hold your Bible up against you so when we cast that devil out, it don't get on you. Now, again, keep in mind, this is war. If problems started with a traumatic experience, <coughs> oftentimes this has opened the door for a spirit of torment to come in. No problem, cast it out. Attack, cast out, evict the spirit of infirmity. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Keep in mind, this is war. Once the problem is determined, Declare the problem has no right to remain. Speak the word. Declare the person is free in the name of Jesus. Deliver life, virtue, or power by the method you choose. Laying on of hands is one way to do it. Mark 16, 15 through 18 says, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <coughs> he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can take prayer cloths. Acts 19, 11, and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body was brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, how does that happen? How does that happen? When, when, when Jesus walked the earth, they touched the hem of his garment, right? And they got healed. How did that happen? It's the DNA of God, the Spirit of God, saturating everything about Jesus, even his garment. When they touched it, they were healed. First, the lady with the issue of blood, right? got healed. People heard about it and they pushed in to touch his garment. From Paul, same spirit that worked in Jesus, the same spirit that was working in Paul, same DNA, same saturation, the spirit of God. So they'd take handkerchiefs or aprons from Paul, send them out, the same DNA of God to go out and heal those people. And matter of fact, when Jesus said, in greater works than these shall you do, that's a greater work. They pushed in to touch the hem of his garment. The greater work was they sent the handkerchiefs and aprons out. 
Now, words, Mark eleven twenty three 23, says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. If you come up before somebody with cancer in their body, you can call that cancer a mountain, and say, Mountain, I command you to be removed now and cast into the sea. It's, 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 we get hung up a lot of times on the religious side of things that we want to be just right, right? We want to, we want to make sure we say things right. But I promise you, if you're walking in the power and authority of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit working through you, and you lay hands on somebody. Holy Spirit knows what part of the body to go to to deliver that person. So again, if you don't say anything, you just lay hands, the Spirit of God works through you and goes through them and heals them. But you, if you say, mountain, be removed, the Holy Spirit knows what mountain to remove. You can call the sickness what it is. You can call the crippleness or whatever. You know, rise up from the wheelchair uh, whatever pain go uh, don't get so caught up on having to say everything just right I heard a preacher one time say that he was preaching at a Russian church and they had the healing line at the end and he didn't speak Russian they didn't speak English and the interpreter took off to go minister to somebody so he's standing here in front of all these Russian people and he don't understand what's going on with them. The interpreter's not there to tell him. So he just starts laying hands on them and praying. And the people were delivered and healed from all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. And he didn't have a clue of what any of them had. So that's the Holy Spirit. Now, an action to be obeyed. John 5, 8, 9, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. This is the man, this is the man at the pool of Bethesda. Y'all know the story. Why did I put this in here? Because I want to give you some encouragement to look back. If you'll get people to do what they couldn't do before, give them an action to obey, they can be healed from that. I heard a, 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 a testimony one time, this man had a, uh, his friends played a practical joke on him. They put mercury in his drink. That's some practical joke, right? Well, the mercury started killing the man. His skin turned gray, he started losing weight. He went to the man of God to be prayed for and as he was fixing to pray for him, the Lord stopped him and said, ask the man what he would like to eat. So he didn't even lay hands on him and pray for him. He asked the man, said, well, what would you like to eat if you could eat anything? And he told him, you know, I'd like to have a milkshake from this place or whatever. He said, go get you one. And the man went to do what the man of God told him to go do. He was instantly healed. Now he did see this man for a couple of months. He ran into him at a mall, saw the man, almost didn't recognize the man because the man had put on 20 pounds from that day when he obeyed what the man of God told him to go do. You see how God works? It's, it's, not, it's not whether or not we get it just right. It's doing what the Holy Spirit, it, it's, it's obeying, it's listening, it's, it's doing what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. So you can give a person, and you know, I've, I've had people, I was like, what's wrong with you? And, and they got a pain somewhere. Instead of praying, I'm like, well, just go ahead and start moving. Start doing what you couldn't do. And before you know it, all pain's gone, and they're completely healed. So... Again, when you, when you go out, deliver life by the method that you choose. 
Tell the spirit of the problem what you want it to do. Luke 10, or Luke 13, 10 through 13. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together, bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. When he spoke to that woman and said, Woman, thou art loose, the spirit that had her bowed together heard the command and knew he had to go. So, again, I put these scriptures in here to give you some encouragement, something that you can go back and look at. There's a lot more scriptures that you can dig into and be encouraged by, but I wanted to give you examples and show you if you just speak the word, if you just stand on what Jesus did, you can walk this out and see results in your everyday walk. You see people set free, delivered, made whole. Tell the body what you want it to do. Luke 7, 11 through 17. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Now this man was dead. So he's speaking to the body, right? Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother, and there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, throughout all the region round about. So tell the body what you want it to do. Tell the person to do what they could not do. Keep working with them until they can do what they could not do before. Have them testify of any changes. This will encourage them and encourage you. Ask people. Again, ask people. Is there a change? Where was the pain? Look, don't be afraid to ask people. Where was the pain level? Is it a 10? Is it a 7? Is it a 5? Where is it at now? Ask people. These things will encourage you. Look, I get that we walk by faith, right? We do these things in faith. But we're all the same. We want to know, did a change take place? Can you tell a difference in your body? Can you tell that God's doing something right now in your body? Is the pain gone? Where is it at? Did it go from a seven to a three? Well, if it went from this to this, let's hit it one more time and get it down to zero. Can you tell that, you know, can you breathe better? Can you move better? You know, ask people, is there a change? Call them the next day. If it's somebody you know, say, hey, how are you today? How's your body? Find out what's going on. This encourages you. It encourages me when I run into somebody. I, I told y'all about the lady at the hockey game a month or so ago. We're going through it, and, and out of the blue, the lady just starts talking about her shoulder hurting, and we're walking through the ticket thing, and I'm listening to her, and I don't know who she's talking to, but I heard her, so I just slipped over there, laid hands on her, prayed for her shoulder, and she started moving her, moving her arm around and just praising God for it. A week later, I saw her again at the hockey game. I said, how's your shoulder? She said, you all right with me, baby. She said, it's all good. So... That's encouraging. You know it worked, but you still like to hear that it worked, right? So this is not hard. It's very simple to go out and love and be like Jesus. When you know the word, you can walk in that boldness and not be intimidated, not be in fear. Know that the Holy Spirit is working through you. It's not you. 
It's the, it's the Spirit of Christ in you. So I'm going to stop right there. And I can keep going. Is that good? Is that, is that okay? All right. Y'all stand up. We'll get somebody to pray us out.